So we've got a great, just like Pastor Cammy said, we've got a great series coming up. It's called God Can. And our next gen get to mix in and do different things. You get to be able to, to meet a few of them, a few of the pastors as they speak. And um, we get, we're talking about actually the classics. So today I'm going to be speaking on David and Goliath. In the next few weeks, we'll be talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Jonah, and one other, Daniel. Sorry, Daniel's the other. And so it's going to be a great time to be able to just think about the classics and think about those great stories that we heard when we were young. Most, some of us heard them when we were young. And just kind of just think about the new things that we can learn from them. And we've got our wonderful Shea West here. Say hi, Shea. Ah! Shea is going to be painting a piece of art while uh, I'm talking about David and Goliath. So you can kind of watch the progress of, as it goes, as she progresses throughout the sermon. And uh, she said she'll be done in about an hour and a half. So I got to take my time. No, just kidding. Um, but we'll be able to hear from her uh, in a little bit as well. Just kind of how she, that God gave her courage to conquer fear. And that's what we're talking about. How, how we can learn that from David and Goliath. Now, the story, if you want to look it up, it's uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17. So you can go ahead and go there right now. We'll be hitting a couple verses throughout uh, the sermon. But I wanted to just tell the story because it's a great story and I just love telling stories. And it's a great way for as a parent, as a father, that we can teach our kids the word of God by just telling stories. We used to actually, my son was cleaning out his room. My 16 year old son was cleaning out his room and we're moving his bookshelf out. And a lot of the the books that he was getting rid of, we were kind of taking them to the goodwill. And as we were going through the books, ones that we wanted to keep, one of them was the the Bible that we started, the storybook Bible that we started with all three of our boys. We started reading them when they were young and as they were going to bed. It's one of those things that all three of them, we just kind of did. It was a routine that we had before bedtime. And it just kind of brought a little tear to my eye when I thought about that because actually it might bring a tear to my eye now. Um, (laughs) um, We... (laughs) My 22-year-old joined the Navy, and he went to boot camp. So he left, and uh, it just like, whew. It's one of those things as a father, a lot of you know, that it's to be able to release our kids. That's a big fear for me. To be able to say, God, whew, I hope what they learned sticks. And I hope what, as they grew up in the, in the church, those stories, those lessons, the life change that happened because of becoming a Christ follower stays with them. And as we, as he leaves, all I can do, and we can't even communicate with him for like eight weeks, like no phone calls, no nothing. So it's praying for him. That's what we're doing. (laughs) So back to the story. So interesting thing about the story I was looking at as I was doing some research, I was looking, okay, what does the, this valley look like that they went to? And it kind of looks like this right here where there, we have this hill here, a valley in between, and then a hill on the other side. You guys can all picture it. You can't really see it, but you can picture this valley because this is where we live, right? So the Israelites, God's people were on one side and the Philistines were on the other side. And Goliath would come out morning and evening and just challenge God's people. For 40 days and 40 nights, he would do this. And he would, I mean, nine foot tall giant. He was huge. I was reading like, because in the Bible, it says like, well, it's all these shekels and how much everything weighed. And I'm like, I don't know how much a shekel weighs. I don't know. So I was doing some research and the armor that he wore, his chain mail was 125 pounds. And his helmet was huge. His javelin, the head of his javelin was 15 pounds. And I'm thinking, how do you throw that? How do you even move with that kind of stuff on? But anyway, so here Goliath is, nine foot tall, challenging the army of God every day, twice a day. Your army is feeble. You guys are losers. He would just shout out to them saying, I can beat you. Whoever you guys send out, send anybody out. I challenge you. If you beat me, the Philistines will be your servants. But if I beat you, you will be my servants, our servants. So for 40 days, he would go in and do this thing. 40 days, morning and evening, challenging the army of God, challenging God's people. Meanwhile, David is a shepherd out in the fields, tending his dad's sheep. And his dad says, you know what? I need you to go and deliver some 
cheese, some grain, some bread to the army so that they can supply them and bring back something, bring back some information of what's going on. <clears throat> and David's three brothers were there fighting. So David goes, he gets up early the next day. He leaves his sheep with another shepherd and goes just like his father tells him. He gets to the valley and he sees the army on both sides and he drops off all the stuff at the guy who's in charge of the supplies. And he, he goes to the, where everybody is and, and just, it just so happened that at the same time that he got to the front lines, Goliath was coming out again. And Goliath once again says, I'm here to defy the army. You guys are worthless and I'm going to beat you. I am the champion. I'm nine feet tall. Bring out anybody you want and I will conquer him. <clears throat> David was there and he's thinking, who, what, why isn't anybody doing anything? There's thousands of military army guys here and nobody's doing anything. Does, what, what, what's, what is going on? And David has like this courage or has, there's something within him that's boiling up and he just keeps on asking, who is this guy? And what happens to the person who goes out and beats him? So some of the people hear him talking and like, well, hey, if you go out, if somebody goes out and beat him, he's going to have this, the king's going to give him a huge treasure, a huge reward, and he'll even be able to marry the king's daughter. So David asks around a little bit more and his brothers find out that he's asking and his brothers get mad at him. Like, what are you doing? Go back and take care of the sheep. But David ignores his brothers, kind of like a lot of brothers do. They're making fun of him. So he ignores him anyway. And, but it, Saul finds out that this, somebody's talking about challenging Goliath in the camp. So Saul, the king calls for David to come forward. David comes, meets him and Saul sees him and basically laughs at him and say, uh, you're just a kid. You're just a boy. How can you just a kid conquer or fight against Goliath who has been fighting since he was a kid. How can you ever do anything for this, to this guy? And David at that point, just, just something's welling up that courage, that strength that he has, that confidence that God has given him is boiling it over. And he, he tells the King. And when you think about it as a kid, he didn't, he wasn't afraid of anything. He went forward and said, Hey, listen, I'm a shepherd. And this is what happened. When I was out watch, taking care of the sheep, a lion came and grabbed one of the sheep and took it away. But I chased after it and I freed the sheep and grabbed the lion by the hair and killed the lion. And just, just like the lion, I also did the same thing with a bear. So he's telling this king, I, could, I killed, God helped me kill the lion. God helped me kill the bear. And God's going to help me take care of this giant. So when I think about it, I'm like, how is, what, what was going through Saul's head? Was he like, did, was it like just, you know, at least somebody's moving forward. Someone's coming forward to take on this guy. So I, as a king, I would have been like, uh, thanks for the stories, kid. I'm going to find someone else. But there was nobody. It was 40 days and 40, 40 nights, 40 days that he has been doing this. So the king acquiesces and says, okay, you can do this. Go for it, David. Let me give you some armor so that you're not like just with nothing. So he put, Saul puts on David's armor onto David and he's got the armor, the chain mail. He's got, well, not chain mail, the armor. And he's got a helmet, puts a helmet on, puts all king stuff, right? He's ready to go all shiny and ready to go. Puts a sword around him and David tries to move, tests it out. He's like, yeah, this isn't going to work. I've never tried this. I've never done anything with this. I, I just need to go normal. Takes off his clothes and the king says, okay. So David goes and he gets his, gets the stones. And as if you, if you guys can picture it, the, these armies have come down from the hill and they're now in the valley as Goliath is out there. And Goliath sees David, just a kid, and he's laughing at him. Just like other people laughed at him. His brothers didn't believe in him. King Saul kind of laughed at him as well. But Goliath is there and says, send me a champion and you send me this kid. I'm going to grind him up and there's, why would you send me someone like this? So David, as, as the armies are there, Goliath's there standing at the front and then Goliath is just kind of moving forward towards David. And David 
just says, you come at me with a sword and a spear, but I come at you in the name of the Lord. And he puts that stone in his sling and they're charging towards each other. Goliath and David are charging and charging. And as they're charging, David puts that rock in the sling and hits him in the forehead. And he falls face first. Now, if you're, <laughs> if you were one of the army guys that are out on the side, on the Israelites, and then also on the Philistine side, there was probably silence after that happened. They're probably thinking, just dumbfounded, stunned at, oh, this kid just killed our guy. And so he goes up and he finishes, David goes up and finishes the job. And then the Israelites realize what happened and the Philistine, Philistines realize what happened. Philistines take off and the Israelites chase after them and, and attack them and kill them and take people captive. But I want to um, point out a few things. That's the story that we all know and love. And you're probably thinking, okay, that's a neat little classic story that we've heard. And it's a, yes, God gave him courage. And you're probably also thinking, well, what does that mean for me today? I want to point out two different perspectives. David's perspective and God's army's perspective, the Israelites' perspective. And if you go with me to 1 Samuel 17, 24 to 25, the armies of God are there. Remember, for 40 days, they're there. They're supposed to be attacking. They're, supposed, they're ready for war. And here's what they say. All the men of Israel, when they saw the man, Goliath, they fled from him and were much afraid. And the men of Israel said, have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel. See, the Israelites were, their perspective they saw the problem. They saw Goliath and how huge he was and the fact that he was all gigantic. They saw the problem. They were paralyzed with fear. And for 40 days, the whole army, including the king, was paralyzed with fear. They would go out. Goliath would say his little speech and then they would go back for 40 days, paralyzed with fear, not knowing who or what could save them? These were, ooh, sorry, I almost fell. Um, don't wear sandals while you're on the stage, by the way. Okay, so th the armies were there. They were paralyzed with fear. And even though these were the same people, these were the same Israelites that had the history of God saving them, God saving them from slavery, God getting them through the wilderness. These are the same Israelites that chose a king, Saul, and God worked these amazing things through them. And still they were paralyzed with fear. Now let's look at David's perspective in first Samuel 17, 45 through 46. It says this. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and with a spear with a ja and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled this day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand. David was galvanized into action when he heard somebody defy God and his army. David was not paralyzed with fear. He was focused on God and not the problem. Israelite's army was focused on Goliath and how big and how scary he was. But God, but God gave David the courage in the face of fear to stand up and to take action. And not only did God give him courage at that moment, but God had been preparing David from the beginning of time, from the beginning of when he was young. So you hear the stories he starts talking about in 1 Samuel 17, 34. He talks about, he tells Saul about killing the bear. And here's what he says, 17, 34 through 37. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. David was focused on God and what God can do through him. And 
as we go through this series of that God can, God can give us courage today. One of the, I've heard um, a bunch of sermons about David and Goliath, but probably one of the best sermons that I've ever heard of all time was from my father-in-law and um, kind of goes on this, how we, how David was focused at, compared to how the Israelites were focused. And it's a three point sermon and it's like all good sermons should be only three points. Um, I'm on point one, by the way. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but it's a three point sermon. And it's it, like I said, it's the best sermon I've ever heard that helps me remember to focus and where I should place my focus. And point number one, keep your eyes on Jesus. Point number two, keep your eyes on Jesus. And point number three, keep your eyes on Jesus. That's as we are Christ followers in today, and we have the opportunity to lose focus and to be concerned about everything going on, especially in today, right? 2020 is crazy. And if we can keep our eyes on our provider, keep our eyes on God, who will give us courage in the face of fear, we, can, we can't go wrong. So just like David focused on God and what he can do through us, and how God had equipped David from when he was young, gave him the tools and the gifts and the talents in order to accomplish this divine moment in time meeting Goliath. God gifts us and gives us talents and equips us to accomplish what he has given us, our goal, what he has called us. And he called us individually to do different things. If you're a plumber, God has called you to be a plumber. Be the best plumber God has called you to be. If you're a lawyer, the same thing. And I think as we look at this, how God has given him the tools to accomplish this divine potential. We all have that divine potential that God has given us. He has a plan for our lives. A couple weeks ago, Pastor Ryan was talking about how we're not just out kind of trying to figure things out. God has a plan for everybody's life. Just like with David, David had probably didn't know, well, I know he didn't know, but as he was saving his sheep, that that would be preparing him for the, with confidence and with courage in order to kill a nine foot giant. Now we probably today won't be faced with a giant, right? Probably. I mean, I'm tall, but I'm only six, four um, and I'm getting skinnier. So, um, <laughs> So it's, it's, it's those kind of things that if we, if we realize that they're, they're going to be just like Pastor Cammy was saying, there's going to be trials. There's going to be things that affect who we are and how we act and how we do things. But if we're keeping our focus on God and our priorities are there, that God will give us courage to face the fear that comes. Because it won't, it won't be easy. He's equipped us. He's given us the tools for today. The tools for today aren't going to be a sling and a rock. But the tools for today are prayer. The Bible. Reading God's word. And worshiping. I think if we can constantly be in prayer, we can hear, we know, we can recognize God's voice in the cacophony, the craziness, all of the different voices that are out there. And we hear his yeah, that was a good word. Just, I know you guys are like cacophony. Yeah, that's a, I paid a dollar for that. Um, so now nah, I got distracted. I have ADHD. I'm sorry. That's what happens. Um, if we can be in God's word and praying and hearing God's voice, we know his voice compared to the others. It can give us the courage to act in the face of fear. And I only have five more minutes. So um, so we're going to have Shay come on up and give us a little devotional. And put your hands together for Miss Shay West. Sorry about that. Technical difficulties. It's first time. Um, as Pastor Gabe Shea said, my name is Shay, um, 
And he, when he asked me to talk about uh, a time in my life where I, I had courage, I was courageous, my David moment, if you will, I actually couldn't think of anything. In fact, I could only think of a moment where I didn't have courage. That was last year at Camp Cedarcrest, and it was our worship under the stars night. And I remember a leader had asked us all to pray and think about a Bible verse. And if one was put on our hearts, we were supposed to come up and say it to everyone, kind of like I am to you right now. And I had had a verse on my heart and I was all set to go until the first person went up. They said their verse and the leader asked them to pray in front of everyone. And I thought, oh, heck no, I can't do that. No, God, no, 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 no. I am not equipped for that. I'm not going to speak eloquently. I'm just, I'm going to mess it all up. And I sat there frozen in fear of speaking in front of everyone, kind of like I'm doing right now. (laughs) And I'm still thinking about it to this day. And I'm trying to figure out what to say. And I'm asking myself, asking God, why am I thinking of this moment? And I realized, like I've said before, what I was scared of then speaking in front of everyone was the same thing that I'm doing right now. I'm speaking in front of everyone. And uh, <laughs> and I realized, I was thinking about it and I don't feel courageous. God, this isn't courage. This isn't what courage looks like. So of course I had to think about what courage is. So I look up the definition, of course, and the definition is the ability to do something that frightens one. That's all it is. It's not, it, the definition doesn't talk about this big grandiose moment, this big David moment, like I always pictured it in my head. Courage is simply doing something that scares you. So I just wanted to remind everyone, you're still having courage in your life by doing something that scares you. It doesn't have to be a big David moment. doesn't have to be a big David moment. It doesn't. Uh, What is your Goliath? What, we're not going to be faced with an actual giant, but what is your Goliath? What is God asking you to do to step out in courage, to step away from the fear and step out in faith and knowing that God is telling you to do something? What is it? Think about it. I'll give you 30 seconds. Ready? Think about it. Think about what God is calling you to do. Five more seconds. I can tell because I got the clock here. Okay. Is God calling you to reconcile with a loved one? That's scary sometimes. Is God calling you to face the giant of having that conversation at work? Bringing that conversation back to, to God? Is God calling you to step out in faith knowing that he will care for you no matter what? Because Just like this series is called God Can, God can fill the brokenhearted. God can restore broken walls. God can give you courage to stand in the face of fear, and he will. God can give you the words to say to your neighbor, to your workmate, to whomever, whoever God is calling you to speak to. It doesn't have to be a huge, grandiose thing. But just having those conversations, it could be something as simple as having a conversation with your neighbor and showing him the love of God. David and Goliath is a great story. But knowing that God prepared him for that divine point in his life to meet Goliath, God has prepared you for divine moments that happen every day. Be listening to the Holy Spirit as God is talking to you and telling you to step out 
and don't be afraid because God can give you courage. Let me pray for you. Father, we praise you. We thank you that you are the God and the creator of the universe and you are our Father. That in all things we can go to you whenever we are afraid or anxious or feeling empty. We can always lean into you because you will never leave us nor forsake us. Lord, I pray that we would hear your voice as you're speaking to us at every one of those divine moments that happen every day. Give us courage to speak when we need to speak. Give us courage to stand when we need to stand. And give us courage to even be quiet when we need to be quiet. Thank you, Father. I praise you and I thank you for you are our God. And all God's children said,